Trey Hearn Cruz of Black Lives Matter Minnesota is with us to discuss the, the, the murder of George Floyd. Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. As uh, Minneapolis is burning, one of the uh, restaurants, uh, one of the business, the local businesses caught on fire is called uh, Gandhi Mahal. And uh, they had you know, put up a sign that said minority owned. And uh, he said, the, the owner, the guy who owns this, uh, his name is Hafsa. He says, as I'm sitting, uh, I, you know, as I'm, oh, this is his daughter. She says, as I'm sitting next to my dad watching the news, I hear him say on the phone, let my building burn. Justice needs to be served. Put those officers in jail. Meanwhile, Keith Ellison, the attorney general for the state of Minneapolis, or Minnesota, excuse me, uh, tweets uh, on his private uh, Twitter account. I just retweeted it. Uh, a picture of Umbrella Man, the white guy who's smashing the windows. And according to our last caller, was helping set the police department on fire. He says, Keith Ellison says, this man doesn't look like any civil rights protester I've ever seen. Looks like a provocateur. Can anyone ID him? Um, so, you know, here we are with all that. On the line with us right now is Trey Hearn Cruz. Trey Hearn is the national co-chair of the Green Party, but uh, perhaps more consequentially to this conversation, he's an organizer of Black Lives Matter who lives in St. Paul, uh, blacklivesmatter.com, and of course the Facebook Black Lives Matter Minneapolis, uh, and his Twitter handle, Trey Hearn, T-R-A-H-E-R-N, Cruz, C-R-E-W-S. Trey Hearn, welcome to the program, and uh, thanks to our, our station, KTNF in Minneapolis, for connecting us. Um, tell us, uh, you know, you, you live there. What's the backstory here? How, it, what, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Let's start at the beginning. What, what, how, how, how has life been in Minneapolis and, and St. Paul all these years for people of color? And, and is this consequentially worse or better? I mean, what's going on? Well, uh, first off, just a quick correction. I'm with Black Lives Matter Minnesota, and our our uh, Facebook page is Black Sorry. Black Lives Matter Minnesota. But life in St. Paul has in Minneapolis has been um, it's been rough, and you're seeing that with what happened to George Floyd. He was um, choked. The, the officer put his knee on his neck for eight agonizing, terrorizing minutes, which ultimately caused uh, George Floyd's death. Before that, we had Jamar Clark. Just recently, my sister, her name is Delshia Perry, uh, her son was found dead in Beltrami County Jail. They told us that he died in officers' arms, but when we got the video back, we seen that they just neglected and abused him and let him lay on the floor for eight hours until he died. So oh, they, the first story they came back with was that he... Um, you know, died, but then they, when the video released, uh, they just last week said that there has been uh, too many violations to to count. So this is what uh, people in Minnesota are facing, whether it's uh, Jamar Clark, Marcus Golden, Thurman Blevins, Travis Jordan was having last year or maybe the year before in one month, five people who had called the police and were having a mental health crisis got shot by the Minneapolis police. And they were all people of color. So it's, that's just with law enforcement. As far as our, our disparities in Minnesota, I'm pretty sure you know we have the biggest education gap in America. We have the biggest housing gaps in America. We have the biggest wealth gaps in, in America. We have the biggest health gaps here in St. Paul in, in uh, America. They did a trash collection thing, which was ironic because it was going to make it made our property taxes go up here in St. Paul. But the information they used, they said it was an um, issue of about disparities, but it actually made made poor people's rents go up. But that data, they said uh, people of color are 120 percent more unemployed than whites in St. Paul. And then um, also with housing and figures and things like that. So. There's a, so when we talk about COVID-19, these are the underlining issues that they were talking about why it's devastating the black community more, supposedly more than other communities. But it has it has a lot to do with racial and economic justice, too. Yeah, absolutely. And what are you hearing from from friends, colleagues, uh, neighbors? about what was happening downtown over the last couple of days uh, in Minneapolis. Um, I, you know, I've, I've 
I think that uh, I, I was flipping back and forth this morning between MSM, NBC, and CNN, and it seemed like they were, even though, uh, you know, this white guy with the black umbrella dressed all in ninja black, um, looking like all brand new clothes, by the way. The thing I remember from the 60s being in SDS was that the police provocateurs who used to try to infiltrate us, they always showed up with brand new clothes on. Uh, you know, like they just went yeah. out and bought some hippie clothes. And, uh, you know, this guy looked like he was, you know, brand, all brand new clothes. And, and you know, they, they got a close-up of his face finally toward the end. And he's clearly a white guy. And he's smashing these windows and things. Um, have you heard from anybody? I mean, what are you hearing that's going on? And, and to what extent do you think that, that the actual, you know, lighting of fires and smashing of windows and stuff is being done by provocateurs rather than protesters? I would say, um, well, I think there's some is provocateurs, like that guy. That guy is definitely a provocateur, but a provocateur could get things going, you know, so they might yeah. smash something. And then the people who are actually out there protesting or some of these people who are they're not actually. What's happening right now is we have people who usually protest and they usually protest, but this has brought out a lot of different type of people, people who don't usually protest but are angry about what happened. I do believe that there are provocateurs, especially I, w I got some calls about something that happened at the precinct last night. Oh, for something that I know that I say we were um, at where George was killed, there were people holding space there, so they had food, they had pizza, they're just out there peacefully, um, re you know, gathering mm -hmm. and mourning, mourning George Floyd. Then another group comes up, and then they start trying to just take over. But this is like you can't really come and take over these people because they're like black community members, and they're just there holding space and mourning George. And then another group came and tried to tell them what to do. So I do hmm. think there is some, uh, yeah. you know, some provocateur type of behavior going on. But there is still general anger from the community and then there are also community members who are upset and will uh, display that. Yeah, and and with justification. I mean, I pointed out at the beginning of this of this program that this country was birthed in a, an act of vandalism called the Boston Tea Party. Uh, right. you know, where a million dollars worth of tea was destroyed. That's the thing we celebrate in this country. Yes, you know, we won't put up with this crap anymore. You know, the British cops right. killing people, you know, one of the first people, in fact, the first person that the British cops killed that, that arguably set off the whole thing was Christmas Atticus, a black guy, you know, in the Boston That's Massacre. Right. I mean, I mean it's right. like this, this is our history, damn it. We're talking with yeah. Trey Hearn Q, uh, Cruz, excuse me, national co-chair of the Green Party and organizer of Black Lives Matter in, in uh, Minneapolis and, and uh, resident of St. Paul. Uh, I, I, you were going somewhere and I interrupted you. I'm sorry, Trey Hearn. Um, it, and then again, it just it goes into that, that um, the economic piece. But people really want to see an arrest. They really want to see uh, yeah. the officers who killed uh, George Floyd arrested immediately. If anybody else would do that. They're like, uh, Freeman's arguments are, uh, we got to do an investigation, but well, other people get arrested and then uh, there's an investigation and things like that. So, I mean, they could, can arrest him and then they have 72 hours to charge you or whatever, right. things like that. Right. So yeah, that this is, I'm here. completely baffled. Well, you know, I, I mean, I'm not completely baffled. I know, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a racist right. institution and district attorneys are desperately terrified of police and police unions and all that kind of, you know, I get all that. But still, yeah. I mean, it, anyhow, back to you. Well, uh, just and so and that's why we're saying this. We're, it's not good enough just to fire them because we had that happen here in St. Paul where um, a guy let his dog an officer let his dog loose on a the guy. They dumped his chest out. The city had to pay him $2 million, but the union was able to get his job back. And then the FBI stepped in. So we want to make sure that our local governments have the bandwidth to to deal with the police union. And to not, right. if, if uh, a chief of police makes a decision or if a mayor makes a decision and fires an offer, officer for uh, police misconduct, that that... that 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 stands, especially in the case of loss of life. Yeah.
Yeah, but right across the board. I mean, just, you know, terrorizing citizens should be a crime. Exactly. And it should be. Uh, yeah, Whether it's a dog bite. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Cut you off. No, no. It's, no you, <laughs> we, we only have 10 <laughs> seconds left. So finish your thought here, Trey. We're going to hit a hard break. I'm sorry. Um, well, the National Guard is on the ground right now. Um, it shouldn't be like this in an American city. Everybody should get, we should have equal protection under the law in this country. Um, it's not 400 years ago, it's 2020. And we hope that uh, Governor Tim Walz and uh, Spike Freeman can get justice for the family of George Floyd and uh, everybody else who was victim of police terror in America.